Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in to Winning Cures Everything. This is the Tuesday night solo show. I am your host, Christopher Giannini, and I am once again solo after having a uh, a couple of shows where I got to bring in my friends from Westlot Pirates. We got to talking about the draft and all that fun stuff. They joined me. We had a good time. I love those guys. You can check them out if you want to know anything at all that's going on with Northwestern. Um, they are your go-to guys. Scuzz, Sam, John, thank you so much. A uh, little housekeeping. We are Winning Cures Everything, and Gary has worked very hard for uh, to put together our website. So go to winningcureseverything.com. You can find all the information about us there. Um, I wrote an article this week. I don't write a lot. I'm very self-conscious about when I write. Uh, but but I wrote an article about the draft, and it was basically um, about Cleveland and how proud I was of of a city that that it's close to me, very near and dear to my heart, and um, and uh, and how how well they did. I think hosting this draft. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so go check it out and uh, let me know what you think. You can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Chris B. Giannini. So I appreciate that. If you want to email me, I'm at Chris at winning. Sorry. I'm Chris at winning cures, everything.com. You can do that. Um, uh, and, uh, and so, so we'll get on with it. Um, also you can check Gary and I out. The show usually comes up on Wednesday nights or evenings, uh, on YouTube at sbrpicks.com. That's when our college football weekly show that we handle during the off seasons going up. Um, you can go check us out there. We love those guys. We appreciate all that they do for us and uh, letting us partner with them. Um, and then the last bit of uh, information I've got for you coming up is our good buddy from SBR, Kyle, is wanting to kind of do a little home and home action with uh, um, doing the uh, draft breakdown. We're going to break down all eight divisions in the draft and tell you what we think. I'm very curious to see what he and Gary think about some of these. Um, I've looked through, I, I bet nine different graph uh, websites that do draft grades on all these teams. Um, it, in almost every one of them, I like mine is different than all of theirs. They're all very different as well. I'm pretty sure graph grades are basically just what you get when I like this player this team took this player, so I'm going to give them a good grade. If there's a player I don't like or I don't know and they took that player, I'm going to give them a bad grade. It doesn't mean anything. It's the reason why I like looking back three years, five years. That's when you really can tell if a, if a draft is, is done well uh, or not. So anyway, um, Kyle's going to come on with us, and we're going to go on with him. We have no idea how we're going to split it up, but uh, – all of the shows will be on our podcast network. So that's not a problem. That's not an issue at all. Uh, so anyway, let's get into the show. Biggest news in sports right now is Aaron Rodgers. Okay. This is a guy that I've got, uh, uh, if you've been around with me for a while, I've got, I've got a little bit of a weird history with. Um, great player. Never once in my life have I ever questioned his talent. Uh, you're talking to a guy who... Mm, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call me a mama's boy because I, I, I wasn't close to my mom at all growing up. Uh, once I gave her grandchildren and my brother chose not to, uh, I became absolutely the chosen one. But uh, I was raised by a single mom. It was, in, in, in regardless of, of, of our struggles growing up where, where I was a pain in the ass kid. I fully understand that. I'm a very difficult person to live with as an adult. My family would vouch for that. They wouldn't hide it or deny it. Um, and 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 I'm certain. I know. Not, I'm not certain. I, I know this. I know this for a fact that I was I was a difficult child. Um, and, and and so I put some strains on those relationships. Neither here nor there. Family's family though. Like there's family that I don't like. There's family that I don't enjoy being around. But but you don't stop talking to family. I've always had a weird issue with the fact that Rogers doesn't talk to his family. Okay. No. Now, and I'm, I'm sure there's a million people out there that are going to say, you don't know what happened. You're right. I don't know what happened. But I've seen some pretty messed up stuff happen in family, and you can kind of get over it. And he doesn't appear on the surface to have been abused 
Okay. And, and that would be the one thing that we would all kind of say, yeah, I totally get it. You wipe that person off uh, from existence. So he's a person that I've kind of always been really critical of. I think here's the reason why it's not that he doesn't talk to his family. I think you know a lot about a person, the fact that they don't. Does that make sense? Like, it's not that I'm judging him for it, but I, I don't have a problem. The fact that he doesn't talk to his family. I feel like I know a lot about him as a man because he doesn't talk to his family. Okay. And maybe that's wrong, obviously, you know, it could be, but I have my opinion and that's it. So this situation with uh, the Packers, I'm a, I'm a little torn on. I find it to be a little strange. You can be upset with your organization and you're the star and he's always been a bit of a diva. That's fine. I, I don't, you know, I don't knock guys for being that. I can't tell you that if I was as good as them at anything that I wouldn't be unbearable to be around um, or whatever. He's He's got to, like, like, we're criticizing this GM, okay? And he doesn't want to work for the GM. He doesn't want to play there. He wants this guy fired. Wanting somebody fired before you come back to work is pretty harsh, man. Like, that that person needs to have, have greatly wronged you, Okay. Like, like been offensive to you or are physically assaulted you or something of that nature for you just to say, I'm not coming to work unless, you know, Jim is fired. Like, I'm like, that's tough, man. You want this guy to lose his livelihood. That's, that's a little harsh for me. Okay. I also live in a world where I appreciate and understand contracts. You signed one. You're paid handsomely. Now you're probably grossly underpaid as these new contracts are getting bigger and bigger, but that's how contracts work. Like if you don't want to be underpaid, sign one or two year deals all the time. And then every year you can just be the highest paid guy. That's not a problem. But, but when you, when you sign these monster deals for long terms, five years, yeah, the last four years of or the year four and year five of that contract, you're the team is getting more than you're getting out of that deal. That that's okay. Like you agree to it. You, you sign that deal. Um, and, uh, and, and so it's just, I feel like you have an obligation to work, but also I see this, the fan side of this. Okay. Like you're taking these people that have worshiped you from the time you've gotten there and supported you and backed you all the time you've been there. And you're just basically saying this isn't about you. It's about me. Okay. And I don't like this guy. And so I'm willing to leave and I want out and I'm, I'm, I just want to leave. If you want to leave, become a free agent and leave. Like, I don't have a problem with that. But when you're under contract trying to force someone's hand, I bring all this up today, A, to give my opinion on it, because Gary and I haven't gone that deep down the rabbit hole, and there's not a whole lot to talk about today. But also because a guy that I do love listening to, and and a guy I respect a lot, Terry Bradshaw, came out today and and said some pretty some pretty harsh things um, he, he calls, he calls Rogers weak. That's a, it's a bold statement, by the way. I'm, I'm not the person that should be calling Rogers weak. Okay. I'm a guy who is the fattest, most out of shape person. I know that sits on my ass and I talk on the internet about sports. All right. I, I don't have the right to do that. Terry Bradshaw, on the other hand, got some bona fides. Okay. He's, he's got some qualifications if he wants to do that. Um, and I'm not going to disagree with him. This is his exact quote. Let him gripe, let him cry, retire. You're 38. Go ahead and retire. See you later. I mean, I'm really strong about this stuff, about stuff like this. I like that. Sorry, I'm going to get this quote right. I'm really strong about stuff like that. And it just makes him look weak. Man, that's a that's a harsh, tough statement. But this is a guy that played for the same team his entire career. All right. And, and yes, he had Hall of Famers around him, and, and, and we would obviously say that his team we think is better than, than Rodgers' team around him. But, man, listen, th- that GM that Rodgers wants fired, we're so critical because he won't spend a first-round pick on offensive talent for Rodgers. That team is one of the most talented football teams in the NFL. He has built one of the best teams in the NFL. If he loses Rodgers, that's not something you can just lose overnight and be okay but what I am saying is, is he's lost Rodgers and replaced Rodgers with a good quarterback, not a great quarterback, but but not trash either. A good quarterback. That team's probably still a playoff team. 
Like they have some of the most talent, the best depth in the in the in the country, in the all the NFL. So the the quabbles Rodgers has is personal. Now I've heard many people say when you become a star like that, you should get uh, say in how the team is ran. I I'm just never going to agree with that. I'm I'm never going to be okay with that. Now I take the player's side in most of these players' managements, but butting of heads, especially when it comes down to money. Um, but I also understand we're trying to build a team here, and football it's a little different. Okay, you you take up the most amount of money on the team. That means I have to pay the rest of the team out of out of a hard cap. Not the easiest thing in the world to do. And they've built a really good football team around him while he's taking up such a huge cap number. That's, that's you know, that's something you have to take into effect when you do this, all right? I think they've done a real, real good job of it. I, I'm, I'm actually impressed with the Packers. Not an organization, I'm not a Packer fan, never have been, but I like them. I respect them as an organization. Lambeau is one of those um, mecca type places that I want to go. I mean, I, I like it's where football is is God there. You know, it's one of those those I don't like to say bucket list places because if I don't get there, like was my life worthless? <laughs> was it was it not as important or, or, or fulfilling? Um, but I would like to I would like to get to Lambeau one day. I'd like to see this place and and I'd like to be there with Rogers. I I said it on the uh, the the Monday live show with Gary yesterday. I don't think we're going to get that ever again because this is a guy that when he makes up his mind, he's done with somebody. This is a guy that doesn't talk to his mom. I, I can't imagine him just forgiving this to come back to work. Like that's, that's hard. Like if he does, that tells me even more about him. Like, damn, like four months goes by and you could be pissed off at these people and get over it. I mean, we're talking like 10 years have gone by and you don't talk to your family. Like that's, that's crazy. Uh, so, so I'm interested in that. I'm, I'm curious to see how it plays out. I'm curious to see if Terry Bradshaw faces backlash because we don't have a lot of people in the media today saying these types of things about current players. But Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal on the TNT um, NBA show do this a lot, by the way. Now, they get away with it. I don't know what Charles has, has reached a, a point in life of fame and, and likability. Like I, I think he could say anything and not, and not be canceled or not get in any type of trouble or anything. I think everybody appreciates and respects his opinion. I also think that's why he's as popular as he is though, by the way, I, I think those things go hand in hand. Um, so either here or there, let's move on. My Patriots are losing at the end of this year uh, a pretty, pretty major, major piece to that team. Okay, Now, I say losing. I don't know how much they're losing. Um, Ernie Adams, if you're not a Pats fan and you don't pay close attention to things going on in the Patriots world, uh, this, this name won't mean anything to you and you might not have ever heard of him. Ernie Adams was a high school best friend with Bill Belichick. He's been with Bill everywhere he went. Ernie Adams was on Bill's staff when he was in Cleveland um, all those years ago. And the owner, Art Modell, used to walk around the uh, facilities and he offered $10,000. And this is like early 90s, okay? 10 G's is a lot of damn money. It's a lot of money now. He offered 10 grand to anybody who could tell him what Ernie Adams actually does around there, okay? This is somebody that Bill has had on the uh, on the payroll and, and as a staff, as a member of his brain trust his entire career. He trusts him more than he's ever trusted anybody. Okay. And Ernie is this is this is Ernie's last draft that we just went through. And Bill kind of did a little homage to him and a, and a little nice goodbye to him uh, at the end of the draft. And 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 that's fine. I'm hoping that he's not done and this is not a full on retirement, but this is just a man doing all this work for the draft is a ton. Let me just kind of do my regular day job stuff and, and stick around uh, as long as Bill's there. Let me tell you the things that I know that Ernie does. I don't know a lot, by the way. Uh, 
Nor Princiati for the ringer covers uh, the Patriots. She's a Patriots beat writer, has been in the past, um, knows that team well, has interviewed Ernie Adams before, uh, knows that organization. And she was just like, I, I don't know that anybody outside of Bill and Ernie know what Ernie's actual job is, like what he actually does. Uh, but things that we do know that they've talked about in the past, and he's been on those do your job uh, NFL production things before. Um, he is the, uh, rules guru. Okay. So anytime, like when the tuck rule happened and Bill walked out there and was like, uh, that's not a fumble. That's actually a rule that y'all have that, that says it's an incomplete pass. Um, everyone gets mad and everybody doesn't like it because they don't like the rule, but, but that is a rule. And how did Bill know that was a rule? Because Ernie Adams knows the rule book backwards and forwards. And he's taught it to Bill, and he's in Bill's ear constantly, and 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 he is able to tell him all these things. Ernie is the numbers guy. Ernie is the. It's strange. It's not some young kid from MIT. It is this this you know sixty five seventy five year old man, um, that that knows this every situational football move in the book and what the book says you should do for all of them, um, and and he is the person that that feeds that information to bill uh i know he does a lot of scouting work when the malcolm butler play at the end of the super bowl with the seahawks happened uh they talk about how it was ernie that saw the seahawks in like week three or four ran this goal line package out of ran this play out of this specific goal line package and so when they played him in the super bowl the day before when they were doing their walkthrough, they literally had the scout team line up in this specific goal line package. And we're like, look, they don't do this often, but if they line up in this package, they like to do the pick play over here. You can't get picked. You got to press him. You got to jump the route or it's going to be a touchdown. It's going to be an easy touchdown because the, the refs aren't going to call the pick play because it's within like the yard line, you know, distance or whatever. Ernie's the one that saw that when, <laughs> If you ever go back and watch the Do Your Job special from that season, which if you're not a Patriot fan, you don't have to do this. You're going to hate it, and you're going to cry and complain. But if you are a Pats fan, you should have watched it 10, 12 times already, and and you know what I'm talking about. Literally, they're telling Bill, do you want to call timeout? Do you want to call timeout? And he's just looking at the sideline, and he's looking at the formation. He's looking at the sideline. He's looking at the formation. And then all Bill says is, no, they're in goal line. Go. And you you hear the DB's coach say, Malcolm, get in there. And Malcolm goes, and Malcolm makes the play. He, he presses the route. He doesn't get picked. He, he makes the interception, and, and the rest is history. All of that was put together because Ernie Adams saw this play that they ran one time in the regular season and thought, if they're in this situation, they might try it again. Like, like that's the level of detail that he does. Bill Belichick has talked in the past about – their book on scouting, what they watch for, how they note take it, how they document it, and everything, which he has basically sent coaches out into the ethos, and now 80% of the league does it. Ernie wrote that book. Ernie put that book together. It's all from Ernie's brain. I am I'm a little worried as a Pats guy. I'm a little worried that Bill Belichick's brain trust is kind of – seeping away and and it's about to be all him and Josh McDaniels of course but I'm really hoping that Ernie is just done with the draft moving on gonna stay in gonna work the season with Bill and and just you know maybe goes down to a part-time semi-retired gig but he's still around because I think that guy's I once again Outside of the few things we talked about, nobody really knows what Ernie does. But I know every Pats fan will tell you this. Whatever the hell he does is probably the most important thing that happens to that football team outside of what Bill, but what Bill Belichick does. Okay, that That's important. That's a big deal. If you're a Pats fan, that matters to you. If you're not, sorry. You just listened to seven minutes of me rambling about my team and, and an important player. But hopefully, if you could get – ease up some of your hatred and and appreciate what 
what this hidden figure that has never wanted fame or limelight in, in, in history has has been able to do to help the greatest dynasty in in, in sports history. Pretty incredible, and uh, and and I'm hoping that he had a really good draft. Staying on the draft, my Cleveland Browns drafted a linebacker in the second pick. K O uh, J O K. I'm not going to try to say his name. That is a Gary thing. Gary is great, great, great at all of these uh, enunciations. I am not, and I'm going to butcher them. I'm going to probably offend people with how I try to say them, and I would rather just keep my mouth shut. But he's got initials that everybody knows, which is JOK. This guy is a monster. And he fell, and he fell, and he fell, and he fell past the first round on draft night. And if you watched our show, we were all wondering, what in the hell is going on? And surely the next day he's going to be one of the first couple of picks. No, no. Now he made it in into the 20s of that round. And Cleveland Brown took him. And we found out Monday the reason he fell was because some medical report came out to say that he had some type of heart complications. And 31 other teams took him off the board because their doctors didn't clear him. The Cleveland Browns doctors cleared him. And let me tell you something that I know about Cleveland. Okay, The number one heart surgeon, the number one heart doctor in the world, in the world, resides in Cleveland, Ohio. And he works at the Cleveland Clinic. And he works with the Cleveland Browns. And he gave this guy his seal of approval. He gave this guy a pass. And I think the rest of the NFL is going to grossly regret letting him fall to Cleveland. Because if there was a place that Cleveland had a weakness, was it's their it's a little bit of their front seven. It is the pass rush and it is the linebacking core. And this dude should have been a top 15 pick, no doubt. No doubt he should have fallen past 15. To fall to the 50s is just criminal. It's it's wrong. I hope I said yesterday on our show when Gary and I just we, – we literally got the live blurb about uh, it being a heart thing while we were live, and, and we hit on it for a second. I'm telling you, I hope he has a chip on his shoulder the size of Ohio. I, I want him angry at the world, pissed off, and, and I can't wait, cannot wait – to see how he turns out as a football player because I think he's going to be great. We literally got a team that had no needs going into the draft, got two first-round picks, got two guys that I think were top 20 guys, no doubt. And the guy we took in the second round is better evaluated-wise than the guy we took in the first round who I love, 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 love Greg Newsom. So uh, all that to say, I, I am so ready ready for this football season. I know every team thinks that their team did great. I know all 32 teams think that the Lombardi is theirs. It's in their clutches. They've got their sight on it. I'm telling you, unless you're a Browns fan, you're all playing for second. Just, I'm just telling you right now. I saw what Cleveland did. I see this team. I'm so in love with what they're doing. If they can stay healthy, I think it's over. I, I think everybody else is playing for second. I know that's the most – oh, God, my chair just snapped on me. I know that's the most insane thing uh, to uh, to hear and to see but um, cause, because Cleveland is notorious for being uh, a laughingstock. Uh, we ain't no laughingstock no more, boys. Okay, we're just not. Last story I got for the day is pretty interesting. Still a little bit in the NFL. But this was probably my favorite thing that I read today. DK Metcalf, so let's start off. Yahoo Sports, I'm going to give the guy credit. I actually I actually wrote the guy's name down that wrote the story, which I'm bad about doing, so I don't give proper credit, which is a shame on me. But Yahoo Sports, uh, Jeff Eisenberg reports, DK Metcalf is trying to qualify for the Olympics. I think this is so awesome. The U.S. track and field extended an invite to DK and all other NFL players to compete in the Olympic trials this year. DK's agent says he really wants to make the Olympics. I think this would be unbelievable. I I don't know if he has real Olympic sprinter speed. I don't know that. I know this. He is fast. Like crazy, stupid, big, strong, and fast. I don't know that he has the Olympic speed. 
But I know this, I damn sure want to watch it. And I want to see him on the Olympics. And and I don't think he's going to win gold or any of that. But if we don't have any world-class sprinters coming out of America in the 2021 games, I, then then I hope DK makes, makes it. And that's going to mess up the season. And I own him in a couple of dynasty uh, fantasy leagues. I don't care about any of that. I, don't, I do not care about any of that. I want to see DK Metcalf represent America. I really do. But I want him to earn it, okay? I want him. I want to know, can he do it? Can he physically beat all the other American sprinters in the trials? I have no idea how he stacks up. I will be trying to figure out when this is happening, and I will be following it, and I'll be, I'll be seeing how he stacks up with the best America has to offer in the trials. Um, I'm, I'm really curious if any other athlete – now, I didn't hear today – that anybody else accept it, okay? But I'm really curious. Like, I would like to see where Tyreek Hill falls in this. We Everyone says he's the – excuse me – that he's the fastest NFL player in, in the league. I, I don't know. I don't know that. I He's got a shot to go find out. Let's go see. Let's nut up. Let's go to the Olympic sprinting trials, and let's see what you can do. I wish they would have done this years ago when Joe Thomas was still playing. Joe Thomas was a – absolute world-class college uh, uh, disc thrower. And and I think he did the hammer. I think he did the shot put. I think he did all three of the throwing events. I, I might be wrong on that. I know that he was huge in track and field. The reason he went to Wisconsin was because Wisconsin allowed him to do track and field as well. I also am a firm believer that that is why he is the greatest offensive lineman to ever go down in history is because his footwork was so unbelievable due to his experience in track and field. I would love, if I was in high school and I had uh, elite-level offensive linemen that were college-bound, I would be making them do track and field events. I would make them do the hammer throw, the disc, the, 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 the shot put, because the level of footwork and coordination, balance and, and, and technique, but also just crazy quick feet and getting power from your feet and legs – to the upper body that you need to use is so useful during playing offensive line. I wish I would have done it. I wish I would have been, well, when I blew my knee out of it, I guess it didn't matter, but, but I, and I wasn't good enough anyway. So that that's irrelevant. Um, I, I, I would, I would be putting these kids through these things. I would make them two sport athletes because I think the other sport helps them with the, the thing that, that we think they can be great at. I really do. I really believe it. So I'm curious to see if anybody else is going to take this, uh, take up this mantle. Is anybody else going to take this shot? Um, so that's 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 my favorite story of the day. I'll be following DK and and his his run for Olympics. Um, I I think that's incredible, and uh, I'm kind of shocked that it's never happened before. But you know, maybe it has, and I'm just not old enough to realize it or know it. But I love the Olympics. I kind of nerd out around them. I don't talk about it a lot, mainly because most of the sports I don't know enough about to talk intelligently, but I'm interested, and I watch a ton of it. I mean, I consume it all, all that NBC can get into my veins. I'm, 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 I'm watching it, and, and I really enjoy it. Track and field has, has been kind of one of the – I guess before Michael Phelps made swimming just the coolest thing in the world, track and field was always like the premier sport in Summer Olympics. Like it's what everybody looked to, and I would, I would, I just think it'd be really cool if he could go to China and represent our country. I just think that'd be awesome. So anyway, uh, that's the show tonight, guys. I appreciate you checking us out. If you stayed around this long, thank you so much. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I, I mean, if you're listening this far, you probably have uh, subscribed. Leave us a five-star review on Apple. It means so much if you can leave a written review, say anything you want, say something goofy, funny, sweet, whatever. We appreciate it all. Um, and, uh, and and share the shows out. You know, we're, we're trying to grow this thing. Gary and I are trying to get this thing to a point where, where you know, one day we might be able to make a little coin off of it and, uh, and, 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 and pay the bills. Uh, but if not, we're going to keep doing it because we have a good time. And you guys interact with us on Twitter. Um, you DM me. You can Facebook me. You can you can email me. And, and people have. And and I'll just tell you this: I really appreciate it. I enjoy it. I don't have a lot of friends, and 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 I made some good friends from doing this. So I I, I just want to say thanks for that. And uh, I hope everybody has a good night.
Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.